Well, I'm Mr. Palmer here. Next video in the file organization not mini series. Uh, this one's about hashing algorithms being used in what we call random files. Okay. After this, got one more direct access. Oh, two more. Um, yeah, no, 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 one more direct access. Okay. So basically, um, with this video, how does the hashing algorithm work to store data in a random file, and how are data collisions dealt with? So basically, in a random file, okay, we need to think about. Um, in previous examples, all of the data have had the records stored physically next to each other on the disk. So one record is followed by the third, second one followed by the third, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, like that. Okay. But the random file, basically, what we're saying is that random access data is stored anywhere within the on the disk. Okay. Or it's, let's just stick with the concept of a disk for a minute. Okay. So the, the you know the data will be anywhere on there. So it looks like the data basically is stored randomly. But actually, basically, what's happening is a hash algorithm is being used on the key field, and that's going to determine the address that the data needs to be stored at. Okay, so um, as long as you know the value of the key field and the hash algorithm, then you can jump directly to where the data is without having to refer to any other data in the file. So when I say referring to data, the other data in the file, you're not searching from the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, seventh record, or jump using an index to jump to the beginning of a block and then search into that individual small block okay so these are useful in large databases where you need to look up individual records okay but in it, they work best when the database is what we call a sparse database okay for example bank account numbers where you've got uh, you know millions of possible combinations but a lot of them are not being used or mobile phone numbers again billions of possible combinations with very few out of the actual allocatable number base being used all right um, now you will see why a sparse database is best when you actually think about an example. So say for example our algorithm is a really really basic one where we're using the last three digits of a student number to generate the address. So when student 1 comes along we're going to use address 146. When student 2 comes along we're going to use address 147. When student 3 comes along we, 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 we were going to bang into address 146 again. Now we can't store that in that location 146 because there's already student 1's data over there. So therefore, we we're gonna we're gonna put that in the next continuous data location. So if the hash algorithm points at 146, we get there and we find 10146, then it will move along to the next memory section adjacent to that and look for, to see if 11146 is stored in there or not. If that block of data gets full, a special overflow area of the disk is allocated, okay, and then we can have a pointer that points to that um, overflow area where you can retrieve that data extremely quickly. Okay, so you can basically see from here though um, uh, why um, a hashing algorithm basically would be quite uh, would be beneficial, okay, compared to serial and sequential access when you're using a random file, because that hashing algorithm will basically allow you to jump directly to that data. Okay, however, uh, there are issues with data collision, uh, and so. Um, uh, the, the, uh, where, where data needs to be stored in the same address based on uh, the algorithm, you would store it in a con the next continuous data block, or if that's not available, move the data to an overflow area, leaving a pointer that points that where that data can be found. Okay, that's it. The next one is direct access.